Hi guys, if you were asked which dish is the most characteristic for all the Near East, what would you say? Okay, which dish is the most traditional and popular for such countries as Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, Tajikistan and all sorts of stands? What would be your answer? Okay guys, welcome to Cooking Heroes, Vlad is here and today we are cooking pilaf. So, uh, usually in this part I tell you about the ingredients we're gonna need for cooking, but not this time. Pilaf or plav as it's called in the country where I came from is a special case and it needs a special dish for cooking. So, let me show you this guy over here. Basically, this uh, is a regular cauldron, but it's made of cast iron and it's very similar to the Dutch oven pot or the jambalaya pot. So if you don't, don't have like an original kind of uh, pot used for cooking pilaf, by the way, in the country where the recipe originated from, it's called Kazan. So if you don't have a Kazan, you can use uh, any kind of pot that has a round bottom and made of cast iron. Ingredients wise, a pilaf is a very very simple dish. As usual, we have very few ingredients here, but the overall taste of the dish is gonna be very good and nice. So what do we need? The heart and the base for this dish is of course rice. I'm using the steamed rice, but you can use any kind of rice you like. If you have any sort of like personal preference, you can use it. It can be long grain rice, it can be white rice, it can be Indian rice, whatever. We just need one pound or like 500 or 450 grams. Also, we need 150 milliliters of vegetable oil. Again use any kind of oil you like. I'm using the sunflower seed oil, but the original recipe says uh, you should use cotton seed oil. Well, that's uh, like not uh, mandatory. That's not crucial because the cotton seed oil is used just in that locality where the recipe originated from. But make sure that your oil, it doesn't have any specific flour or like very uh, distinctive smell. It should not influence uh, the flavor and taste of uh, the, the, the finished dish. So some, any kind of neutral oil. Next we need, again, one pound of onions. I already peeled them just to save your time. Half a pound of carrots, or just one big carrot half a pound some people say you should use like one pound of rice one pound of meat one pound of onions and one pound of carrots but my experience says that if you put too many carrot in your pilaf it gonna get too sweet but if you like the sweetness of your dishes you can use more carrots but i'll use just a half of what uh was recommended uh of course we need meat, that's a pound of meat. I'm using beef, but the original recipe says it's gonna be lamb. Again, that's due to the location, like the origin of the recipe. The most common cattle there is lamb, so they use lamb. But I suggest you can use uh, basically any kind of meat you like, but not pork, because uh, people of those countries are Muslims, so pork there is banned, it's haram, so you better use either beef or lamb. I took, I don't know which part of meat that is, but I took it because I liked it, so I grabbed it and brought it here. Also we need, that's cumin. There are two options when you cook pilaf. You can use either cumin or zara. They are very, very similar. They have like a slight difference in smell. 
But one thing about uh, cumin and zara is that their smell and flower is very, very strong. So you don't need too much. We need salt, one tablespoon, and we need a garlic. That just one garlic head. I didn't peel it, and I will tell you why a bit later. So that's all about the ingredients. All right, cooking time. So what do we do first? First, we take our pot and put it on fire. We need to heat it up to maximum. All right, so when the pot is preheated, when it's dry and hot, we can pour the oil in it. Why should it be preheated? Well, that's because we need to cover all the sides and the bottom with oil. And we can do that only when it's hot. When the pot is hot, uh, the oil covers the sides better. Okay, so when we put uh, the oil in it, we can put it back on fire and heat the oil up. While the oil is heating up, we have some time to cut onions, carrots and meat. Okay, let's start with onions. Why do we need to heat oil that much? We need to heat oil until it uh, starts smoking. Uh, that's because when we put meat inside, we want it to be like sealed by the temperature. It will quickly start getting a crunchy crust and this will help seize the flour and the juice of the meat inside. That's why we want to heat the oil as much as possible. By the way, if you're gonna move your pot around just like me, make sure you use the cheapest uh, cutting board possible. I'm using the plywood cutting board just not to ruin the antique table I'm having here. Alright, carrot time. First slice. And take a few slices like that and cut. Alright, done with carrots. Uh, don't be confused if uh, you cut it into like long pieces like that. It's gonna break anyway uh, while cooking and generally saying it gonna dissolve into the the broth as well as the onions and the spices so now it's time for meat a nice piece of meat and the size of pieces you want to cut it into is well it depends i prefer when it's bite handy so that means when uh, the size of the piece it's just very convenient to grab and eat in one setting. So I'll cut it into squares. Probably one inch size. Just like that. As you can see, I'm using pure flesh. But I forgot to say that for pilaf, you can use basically any part of the animal you want. It can be a meat and bone like ribs. It can be pure flesh like this. It doesn't really matter. Just take uh, that part that you like most. Okay, so we are done cutting. You see? All the pieces are almost identical and very nice. 
Okay, so everything we wanted to cut is cut. Our uh, pot and oil inside it is heated up. Now it's time to roast some meat. All right, so when your oil in the pot almost started like smoking and boiling, this means it's time to put uh, meat in. Uh, there are two variants of the recipe. I'm showing you the traditional recipe and the traditional recipe says you need to put meat first, not the onions. All right, so let's put our meat in. You see? It starts getting a crust immediately like that that's good because the quicker it gets the crust the more juice and flour gonna stay in the meat Another important thing to say about meat and oil and their proportions is that if you're using like uh, low fat flesh like I do, then you may need more oil. If you're gonna use like more fatty kinds of meat, then uh, obviously you'll need less oil. Alright, so after like 10 to 15 minutes on fire, as I said, uh, our meat is uh, starting to get this nice uh, crusty crunch. This means it's time to put the onions in. Okay, just like that. And now it's time to put it back on fire for another 10, 15, maybe like 20 minutes. After another 10 to 15 minutes, our onions got almost transparent and a little yellowish uh, brownish. This means it's time to add carrots. It's okay if they're long like that. They're gonna break and become soft anyways. So just put it on top like that and let's put it back on fire until the onions and meat get all brown. Not like burned like black, just brown and nice. When the meat is uh, fried really nicely and our onion has got like really really brownish this means it's time to add some water. It is the boiled water but uh, cool down afterwards. So let's just pour it in. Uh, we need to leave like a couple inches uh, from the top so that when we add rice uh, the liquid doesn't overflow the sides. So let's put it back on fire but this time uh, put the fire just a little bit down so that it boils but uh, does not overflow. 
after a couple minutes of boiling our broth is ready to take some salt and cumin so first I will add a tablespoon of salt maybe a little bit less like that I'll mix it up I'll try that a little bit more like that I guess that's okay now let's add cumin we don't need much because this is a strong spice so I'll take that much and smash it like that right in my hands don't use the cumin powder because it's not as like it's it's a smell and its taste is not as concentrated as the seed so uh, try to find seeds of cumin Okay, smash like that and put it in and mix up again Okay, I'll try again Mm, that's nice uh, One important thing You need to leave your broth a little bit under salted Just a little bit That's because we're gonna put it on fire again and let it boil for another 10-15 minutes So that it will get more concentrated Another thing I forgot to say is about the rice when we put uh, the rice there, we need to make sure that it is clean and has no starch. So make sure you clean it on the uh, running water for maybe like three to four times until uh, the water gets transparent because when it gets whitish, this means it still has a lot of starch in it. And if it has starch in the finished dish, you get uh, not a pilaf but more like a porridge so let's put our broth back on fire for another 10-15 minutes to get it more concentrated and now it is the most important part of our cooking now we need to add the rice So just like that, very slowly and carefully. I want to say that after you add the rice, you can't touch this dish anymore. While the broth is being made, you can stir it, you actually need to stir it as often as possible but after you add the rice, that's it you, you must not touch it any longer so it needs to be cooked just as is so you need to spread the rice carefully Okay, I will move it a little bit just like that. Okay. 
Okay. Okay, it looks good. Now, we need to put it back on fire and keep it on a small fire until all the excess liquid evaporates. Alright, so before our rice absorbed all the liquid and the rest evaporated, there's another operation that needs to be done. Remember this thing here? Yeah, it's garlic and we forgot about that. Now it's time to put the garlic in. So what do we need to do? We need to cut it in two halves horizontally. Just like that. Now we need to put it like that but not too deep just so that it could give a juice and smell into the dish just like that okay so i think another 10 minutes and we are done okay so when all the excess liquid is gone and you can see no boiling on top of your dish this means uh, basically our pilaf is ready and all we need to do now is just let it rest without fire for another 10-15 minutes and it's ready to be served. Voila! Okay, so as a result of today's recipe, that's what you're gonna get. A nice, delicious and traditional pilaf. If you like today's recipe, you can give us a thumb up. If you didn't like, you can give us a thumb down. Feel free to leave a comment in the section below. You can subscribe to our channel or visit our website. Bon appétit!